follicular lymphoma is said to be our most, our second most common uh, lymphoma subtype. It represents about 25% of all lymphomas, and if there's 60,000 lymphomas a year in the United States, then that leaves us at uh, about 15,000 new cases a year. However, uh, because it is a very long-lasting disease in patients, if you uh, uh, simply were to look at prevalence, that is how many cases currently exist around the country, it's probably the most common type. Uh, follicular lymphoma is diagnosed when somebody's noted to have an abnormal sized lymph node. Lymph node is biopsied, the pathologist looks at it under the microscope and it has a very characteristic pattern which allows them to say this is follicular lymphoma. Over the course of a patient's lifetime, and that lifetime may be many, many, many years, uh, the patient will periodically have periods of time where their lymphoma is active and requires treatment, and there'll be other periods where uh, it is quiet and doesn't require treatments. Hence, over the course of a lifetime, one is likely to get several treatments. For people with previously untreated lymphoma, there are, in essence, three to four fundamental choices. If a patient is without symptoms and they feel otherwise well, one management option, not a treatment option, but a management option, is to do nothing, so-called watch and wait. A second option available is to induce some form of remission. That can be induced by either radiation treatments if the disease is relatively localized, or systemic treatments if the disease is widespread throughout the body. If you're gonna use systemic treatments, uh, fundamentally we break these options down into cytotoxic chemotherapy or immunotherapy. And classic forms of immunotherapy include uh, what we refer to as monoclonal antibodies. Uh, sometimes these antibodies are in a naked form, such as rituximab, which is a simple protein. Sometimes the protein is conjugated to a, to a chemotherapy drug or a radioactive substance which we call radio immunotherapy. So patients can be induced into remission with immunotherapy with an antibody or with chemotherapy or with both. Once a remission is induced, then next comes the question, now do we do anything to maintain that remission or do we go into a period of watch and wait? Because there are so many treatments for follicular lymphoma and because none of them are curative, uh, we're constantly uh, exploring new treatment strategies and new drugs to employ in those strategies. We do that through a process known as clinical research trials or clinical trials. For every follicular lymphoma patient, whether it be the time of new diagnosis or at the time of relapse or subsequent second, third, and fourth treatment, uh, clinical trial options are an important choice available. Sometimes it offers them the opportunity to get a drug not available through standard uh, FDA-approved mechanisms. Sometimes it simply allows them to contribute to their own welfare and the welfare of other people by helping to advance the field. I think it's fair to say that in the future we're going to build on immunotherapy. I think we have new and improved versions of anti-CD20 antibodies coming along that will likely, again, further improve duration of remissions, further improve uh, survival opportunities. We're looking at uh, new ways to take these antibodies and uh, link them up to chemotherapy drugs so that the cytotoxic chemotherapy is delivered in a more focused manner or a more targeted manner. Again, hopefully resulting in better outcome with less side effects. And then uh, I, th I think a, a third fundamental uh, breakthrough area that I perceive in the next several years is an understanding of the biology of follicular lymphoma and the importance of targeting a pathway we refer to as a B-cell receptor pathway. And there are um, some really neat non or seemingly non-toxic drugs coming along uh, that can specifically target that pathway in ways that have fewer side effects than patients are uh, accustomed to. There's an awful lot for patients to absorb at any given time, a great way to to sort through that at your own pace is to visit a website such as lymphoma.org. This is a disease that's going to last in many cases for years and years. There will be many decisions that need to be made over the course of those years by the patient. And so uh, generally, we spend much more time early on trying to teach the patient about follicular lymphoma rather than worrying about how to treat it. Sometimes we do that through face-to-face -face communication. Sometimes we do that by providing them resources on the internet. 
uh, Lymphoma Research Foundation website would be one of those opportunities so they can participate more actively in our discussions over the years.